Hey everyone, how's it going? This is Jason here, and um, welcome to this live lesson. Give me a quick comment if you can hear me, please, just to know that everything's going on smooth. That'll be awesome. How are you guys doing? Is the piano okay? Guys, here, all good. I'll just play a bit, see if you can hear me. Great. Thank you. Good to see all of you. Welcome to this lesson. So what we are going to do today, which is a little bit more unconventional, when you look at the field of harmony, usually when you look at harmony, you're trying to start with the major scale. What we'll do today is basically we'll start with the minor scale. Okay. And we'll try and look at what are the chords you can derive from the minor scales. We'll try and take uh, we'll try and take the most commonly used minor scales. There are quite a few actually. We should probably do a lesson on just the minor scales on its own. Um, so we'll do, we'll just pick one scale and then if time permits, we'll kind of uh, take it from there, if you will. Okay, so get your books out, get your pens out, get your keyboards out. We're going to learn a lot of stuff today. So let's look at the, uh, the, the, the chords of the minor scale, how to build that and so on and so forth. If you have a keyboard, great. If you have your books, pen, pencil, whatever you want, let's get it out. And uh, let's harmonize a, a scale today. Okay, the first thing I'd like to do is just write down something. Let's write down the E major scale. Okay, E major scale. How many sharps does this particular E major scale have? As we may know, E major has four sharps, right? So if I have to plot out the E major scale, starting here, we'll take E for the class today. So E, F sharp, G sharp, A, B, C sharp, D sharp, E. Of course, that last E is not really a new note. We just write it so, so that we kind of complete the scale by finishing off that octave. So E major. Now in order to derive the respective minor scale, what you want to do is you want to flatten a few notes. And the most common note which you would flatten ends up being the third. Okay, the third note in this case G sharp. So G sharp is the note you would really want to flatten in this particular case. So what happens when you flatten it, it becomes a minor third. So it's essentially becoming a minor third. So this is a note you would want to consider flattening or doing something with. And then in some instances, the sixth or the seventh. Okay. So you need to do something to the sixth and the seventh note. So generally this creates a minor scale. Okay. So if you are trying to build, let's say the most commonly used minor, you could say at least in pop music and in rock music and maybe even in metal music and even in Indian mu film music, right? If you take a song like this, you know. It is a great song by, by our very own uh, Eli Raja. So you could do something on that scale or you can do you know, a very cheesy pop song, like for example. So those 
those songs are essentially on the minor scale right she's written a lot of such songs right uh so basically all that is what you could call as minor <clears throat> okay so we'll start off with one minor scale today and then see how it goes the harmonic minor so what you want to do in the harmonic minor scale is you flatten the the third note and you flatten the sixth note and basically you leave the seventh note as it is so we say actually natural seven so if you think about it you need to mess with the third the sixth and you leave the seventh pretty much alone so let's see how it goes e harmonic minor let's try and write it down e is remaining the same that's your root then f sharp is the second note stays the same the third note g sharp gets flattened by 1 what do we mean by flattening a note by 1 basically if you take a g sharp here when you flatten it by 1 you just move down a step on the keyboard and the keyboard kind of moves in a zigzagish way see it's black to white sometimes when you flatten then white to black sometimes when you flatten or you know white to white perhaps f to e or c to b so flattening doesn't mean going and writing a flat it just means going down a step or what we say in music down a semitone okay so g sharp when gone down by a step what happens to it it becomes g so we write the g okay a remains the same b remains the same okay now c sharp we do something to the c sharp what do we do we have to flatten the 6 that's the rule of the harmonic minor formation so what happens when you flatten the 6th c sharp becomes c there we go so instead of c sharp i just write c and then the last note remains the same d sharp and then you end with your octave e some people say that you should raise the seventh but raise the seventh with respect to what perhaps the natural minor which you already learnt so uh i would just say harmonic minor since you probably all know the major scale what you could do is just you know uh flatten the third flatten the seventh and you're good to go let's just play the scale once on the keyboard up and down if possible so e f sharp g a b c d sharp e that's your harmonic minor scale now the whole point of this lesson is how we can build chords over pretty much any scale how we could get started with chords and then you know also start uh, building some chord progressions within the scale of music okay so this is how we got the harmonic minor scale so for this lesson we are pretty much going to use the harmonic minor scale uh, maybe in another lesson we can do something else with another minor and so on and so forth So let's get cracking. In the next page, let's start working on our chords. So when you work on your chords, it's always recommended to first draw the scale as I may keep saying quite often in my lectures in a neat round circle. So have I written it correctly? I guess so. E F sharp G A B. There we go. A mistake right there. So I'm going to fix that with C. cuz c sharp was in the major scale so e f sharp g a b c d sharp e da 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 now i wrote it down in a circle for a reason stick with me so we've written down our minor scale in a circle you can write down the heading if you want chords of e harmonic minor it's essentially what we are trying to do we are building the chords of the e harmonic minor scale okay so another thing you may want to do 
is to just draw the scale linearly just so that you kind of get the shape of the notes. So this is what I like to call or like to draw as the piano worm as I call it. So you take E, F sharp, G, A, B, C, D sharp, E. So you see you get a clear cut idea of where the black notes are and where the white notes are. See, E, white note, F sharp, black note, G, A, B, C, D sharp, E. So this is what I would call as a piano worm for want of a better word. Quite like that name. <clears throat> Maybe you don't like worms, so then you can call it something else. Okay, so this is the piano worm for you. So this gives you the shape of the scale, white and black notes, and this gives you the actual scale in a circle. Now, why have I written it in a circle? I've written it in a circle primarily so that we can start building triads. And more, com more importantly, these are not just any triads. There are many triads in music. These are what we call as diatonic triads. Diatonic triads basically means it's derived from the scale, from whichever scale you're on. Okay, so all the chords in simple words or all the triads will come from this particular scale. So when you're composing a song on the E harmonic minor or in any other scale for that matter, right, both the melody as well as the harmony. Harmony is also known as chords will be derived from or generally come from the same scale, right, which sort of seems like common sense because why would the melody be on some other scale and why would the harmony be on some other scale, right? So common sense kind of dictates because we are hearing all the elements of music together at the same time. So obviously the melody and the harmony have to be for the most part on the same scale. Yes, you can change it here and there. We have a lot of concepts of music which allow you to go in and out of the scale. Uh, I'd be happy to do some of that as well. I've also done a lot of videos on that, you know, how you can leave the scale. Uh, some of those are a bit old. I can probably do a revamp of those particular lessons. So this is essentially what we're trying to do. We're trying to build diatonic triads of the scale. Normally, we try to do it within a major scale. Now we are trying to do it within the minor scale, more particularly the harmonic minor scale, which is the part of today's discussion. Okay, so when you have to build a triad, it's absolutely easy. It's exactly as the books tell you, you know, you go one, three, five. What I like to do visually, since we've drawn it in a circle, you just take the any note, in this case E, you skip the next one, then choose this one. Now I've got E plus G, right? Now you skip this one, A, and you get yourself B. So the resultant three note structure will be E, G, B. And it's quite easy in a circle, as you can clearly see, you're just going round it uh, sort of clockwise. So one, three, five, as the books call it, I just like to skip one now that you've written it in a very visual format, you know, in a circle. So these are all the triads, if you will. So let's just write them down. So the triads are going to be, what will be the E triad now? I'm writing the heading E. E triad will be E, G, B. Okay. I hope that's clear for everyone. E triad is E, G, B. Now what's the next note? The next note happens to be the F sharp triad. What happens with the F sharp triad now? You go... F sharp, skip the G, do the A, then skip the B, and then do the C. So that's F sharp, A, C. Now some of you may already be wondering, you know, this is not really a very normal chord. I haven't used this that often before, you know. In a major scale, the second is usually a two minor. In this scale, the second, we'll, we'll come to that. It's clearly something else, isn't it? Right. So now coming to the third one. The third one's very interesting as well. You go G, remember E, F sharp, G. So this is the third minor. So you go G, third, B, and then another third, D sharp. Okay, so that's the G chord. That's G, B, D sharp. Okay. Quite interesting. Very mysterious sound. Right, moving on. The next one will be A. 
So what's that going to be? I think now we can move a bit quicker. You have A, C, E, A, skip to the B, C, skip, and then you get E. Remember I told you move clockwise. So you go A, C, E. Okay, that's your A minor chord. And then moving on, you have the B chord. Okay, let me write it somewhere else. In the next column, you have B, D sharp. Agreed? D sharp happens to be the third. Skipping, remember? B, D sharp, F sharp. There we go. You have the B chord now. And then you're on C. That will be C, E, G. Okay. Again, thirds, triads, guys. Yeah. And then you have... D sharp, F sharp, A, D sharp, F sharp, A. Okay. So that's your D sharp chord. I'm just naming each chord by its uh, root, which is the first note. Okay, so these are all the triads. Let's just get acquainted with all these triads and see how they sound first of all. So after we get to terms as to how they sound, then we'll try and uh, name them. We'll classify them. Then we'll try and build some chord progressions out of them. Remember, we are in the key of E harmonic minor. Step one, draw it in a circle. Draw the worm and then draw your all your available triads and uh, we can get cracking now. Let's first observe the sounds of all these chords. That's very important. Okay, so you have the first chord. E, G, B. Okay. Then F sharp, A, C. You see, each chord has a very different emotion. You take E, G, B, feels very pensive, melancholic. We call it a minor chord, you know. Very somber, right? Very aloof, secluded. The next chord is a bit more tense. It's like it wants to go somewhere normal. So you can actually play around with those two chords. The F sharp chord and back to the E chord. Yeah, I will name them very shortly. Okay. So it's very important to know that fact that this chord, which chords are stable and which chords are unstable in that sense. Okay. The next chord is going to be G, B, D sharp. Let's play that. very different tonality, right? Very mysterious. It's sort of like a chord you could find maybe in the movie Alice in Wonderland or The Wizard of Oz, you know, where, you know, she's, you know, revolving, you know, randomly in outer space. You know, you could have these sort of chords. A very dreamy kind of chord. And it's amazing, you know, because you don't find this chord in the major scale, which we use in every other pop song pretty much all the time. You don't find this very often. So, yeah, it's, it's good to know. We'll name it very shortly. Then you have your fourth chord, which is A. That's A, C, E. Okay, coming to the fifth chord. That's B, D sharp, F sharp. Okay, that's your chord five. Then you have your sixth chord. C, E, G. Okay. And then you actually skip. The harmonic minor has a skip. Skip that, skip that, and go here. And then you do the D sharp chord. Just played all the triads for you. Let me do that again. E G B F sharp A C G B D sharp A C E B D sharp F sharp C E G D F sharp A and back to and you resolve it there. Okay, so these are all the chords of the harmonic minor scale. Now, what are we supposed to do? We're supposed to name them and use them. So let's do that now. Okay, I hope you've made a note of all the chords of the harmonic minor scale. Let's now try and make some sense out of them. Okay, 
So the way it's bracketed is, let me first revise all the basic triads which are used in a lot of songs. You have the major chord or the major triad, you have the minor triad, you have the augmented triad or rather let me write the diminished before that. Diminished is more common you could say. And then you have the augmented triad. Yes, you also have suspended chords and things like that. But for all practical purposes, these are the four very important chords, very important triads. Yeah, I'll just write the suspended one as well. Why not? So you can just remember like a general formula for each chord. A major chord can be formed with a 1, 3, 5 from anywhere. Then a minor chord could be formed by flattening the third of the major chord. 1, 3, flat 5. Then a diminished chord is where you flatten the third and you flatten the fifth, both. Okay. Then the augmented chord will be keep the three as it is and raise or sharpen the five. And then we have the suspended chord, more particularly the sus4 chord, which is one, four and five. So if I build this, let's say on one root, let's say C. So C major, I'm sure you might already know. There we go, C major. Now if you take the, the minor version, that's C minor. What did I do? Just flatten the third. Then you take the diminished. Flatten the third and the fifth. Then you have the augmented. There we go. Where you keep the third as it is. Keep the third as it is and then sharpen, raise the fifth. So that will be this one. And then you have the suspended. Okay. Major, minor, diminished, augmented, suspended. Okay. So moving forward. Now in the harmonic minor scale, some chords are going to be, you know, major, some chords are going to be minor, some chords are going to be diminished, some chords are going to be augmented. So we have to basically see it as per the scale. So if I go back here, we have to now kind of assess these chords and figure out what they are called, whether it's called major, whether it's called minor, and so on and so forth. I'm going to uh, basically break that down for you in the next slide. This is a suspended four chord. You also have some other triads, like you'll have the sus two, which is uh, one, two, five, you know. You have quite a few triads actually. Uh, we'll get into triads maybe as a subject very shortly. But for now, let's just address the main ones, which are these four, okay? That's pretty much what we'll do for this lesson. So now let me build the the, the chords as per the scale. <clears throat> so how we look at it is in a harmonic minor scale, we have various types of chords. You have the minor chords, you have the major chords, okay? Rather, I'll probably, you will have minor after which I'm going to write the diminished chords. Then you have the major and you have the augmented. Okay, so in the E harmonic minor scale, what's going to happen? In the E harmonic minor scale, basically, if I go back to the slide, you have all your, if, you, if you've written it down, the first chord, which is E, G, B, also known as E minor, is the first minor chord. So a great way to look at that is write down E minor and also put a, a kind of a small Roman sign. A small Roman indicates it's minor and number one small Roman means it's minor one and the first chord of that scale or degree one, you could say, of that particular scale. Okay, if that's a bit confusing, it's okay. Just remember that E minor is the one minor of the E harmonic minor scale. Okay, moving on. The two chord in a harmonic minor scale is a diminished chord. Okay, so we need to put it in the diminished category. We write two with a degree sign. What is the two now of this particular scale? 
f sharp diminished you can write dim or you can write f sharp degree that works quite well okay now coming to the three chord so e what's the scale again let for everyone's reference let's just build the scale once more e f sharp g a b c d sharp e okay this is the harmonic minor scale so we've built <clears throat> the first degree which is a minor chord that's e g b we've built the second degree which is a diminished chord now we are proceeding towards the third degree the third degree is an interesting chord it's not g major you might think because g b but then you would expect a d here this is not the d this is d sharp so what did i write down in the earlier slide there an augmented chord has a sharp 5 so this is going to be g augmented because it has a raised fifth or a sharpened fifth so you go g and you can write it in the augmented section so we have a symbol where we put a uh, small roman a uh, big roman plus now here's where the symbology gets a bit weird <clears throat> uh, some uh, some schools of thought call it a 3 plus plus always means augmented small number means minor degree generally means diminished but what we may need to also write is the fact that the g is the flat 3 g is the flat 3 of the e major scale so generally these roman symbols when you're looking at roman numeral analysis generally <clears throat> not that you should all the time or you need to all the time but generally speaking this we need to represent as the 3 flat because this is a normal one normal 2 this is a 3 flat with respect to major right so we need to go ahead here and write it as 3 flat plus that's 3 flat augmented okay and what is the three flat augmented now it's the third note g and you build the chord g augmented let's write that down okay and uh, moving on hope hopefully things are clear till here you could write it down till here the fourth chord a that will be a c e a minor okay let's build that so minor chords how do we write this the we need to write it back in our minor column we already have a minor column so we put down our a minor there we go let's also build the bottom area that's 3 flat augmented that's 4 minor so far 1 minor 2 diminished 3 flat augmented 4 <clears throat> minor and now coming to the 5 the 5 is very interesting the 5 is actually a major chord see b d sharp f sharp b d sharp f sharp so it's a 5 major okay if i said minor i'm sorry it's 5 major okay so you go 5 major that's how we write it big roman for major that's generally how it works so you go b major okay big roman 5 finally a major chord moving on so there we have it the 6 is also major you have c e g 6 major but it's preferable to write it as 6 flat major 6 flat major meaning we are flattening the 6 with respect to the major scale so it's 6 flat major and where do we write it in our major area there we go and that's c major and now coming to the seven chord the seven chord is quite easy it's d sharp f sharp a again as i mentioned earlier it's easier to have written it in a circle so i am just showing you as i go along but had you written it in a circle it'll be very easy to get those triads right so the seventh chord is nothing but a seven diminished and seven as i say it we need to write it with small roman numbers seven diminished and back to one minor which is not really an extra chord it's just a repetition where is seven diminished here we go okay that's your d sharp diminished right there and these are all the available chords of the e minor scale or more specifically the e harmonic minor scale
So there are seven chords in the E harmonic minor scale. Two are minor, two are diminished, two are major, one, the lone one is augmented. <clears throat> Another way to look at it functionally, if you want to remember, one and four are minor. You need to mug this up. One and four are minor. Two and seven are diminished. I'll give you a couple of tricks to remember this on the piano very shortly. Two and seven are diminished. Five and six flat, the ones close to each other are major. And then three you just remember as augmented. So if you play the minor chords together, okay, that's your E minor, A minor and um, that's it. I just toggle between E minor and A minor. So a nice chord progression to actually start your journey into the harmonic minor would be just play 1, 4, 1 and the major 5, which is going to be E minor, A minor, back to E minor, and then you have a B. And a lot of musicians will take the B chord and then they'll do like a 7th to it. Okay, we can get into that later. A seventh basically means instead of playing B, D sharp, F sharp, which is the normal B major, you add the seven, the seven flat rather, and the resultant B seventh chord is going to equal B, D sharp, F sharp, and finally the A, which is the seven flat with respect to B. So that's your B seventh chord. So what was once that is now that. B, D sharp, F sharp, A. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to basically build a few chord progressions. I'm just going to explore the chords. And that's pretty much the lesson. So as we go along, if you have any questions, do leave them in the comments and I'll be very happy to take them. I will be very happy to take all of them, in fact. So please leave me your questions. And again, to whoever's tuned in, quite a few of you, thanks a ton. Greetings from all over the world. From my side, greetings from Bangalore, India. So yeah, keep the questions coming. I'll just demonstrate the chords now and how you can put them together. <clears throat> and if you haven't already, if you've tuned in for the first time or if you've forgotten to, please subscribe to our channel by hitting the subscribe button. It's that easy. Okay, moving on. So if I have to use these chords now together, you can just start, I mean, a good a good starting objective if you want to work with the harmonic minor scale would be just do this chord progression, 1, 4, 1, 5. Just E minor, A minor, E minor, and uh, B, B major. So you do something like E minor, A minor, E minor, B. Just loop that. Okay, so another, so that was E minor. So I did E minor, A minor. I used an inversion there. E minor, A minor inversion. Came back here. end on B, uh, B major. Okay. There we go. So uh, just to kind of recap the theory concepts, uh, the C is a flat six with respect to E, the root. The, it, the What would have been the normal six? The normal six would have been C sharp, right? When you flatten the 6, it will be C. So that's why we call C as the flat 6. Okay. So C is the flat 6 with respect to E. And uh, yeah, any other questions, please leave it in the comments. And you can perhaps leave it once in the comments and not a million times if, if that 
works for some of you. Okay, moving on. <clears throat> so what have I done right now? I've done 1, 4, 1, 5. So that's minor 1, minor 4, minor 1, minor 5. Now what else can you perhaps do with this thing? What you can again do, another, another way to practice the harmonic minor is you could do the diminished chords. Okay, so you could do your 1 minor which is like your anchor and then you could uh, fool around or just waver around the 2 diminished and the 7 diminished. This is another nice way to kind of get acquainted with the harmonic minor chords. So you have 1 minor, 2 diminished and uh, 7 diminished. So what do we do there? It will sound something like this. That's F sharp diminished. Back to E. And then D sharp diminished. So essentially what I'm doing there was I'm interplaying between E minor, F sharp diminished, which is the 2, and D sharp diminished, which is the 7. Okay? So... Diminished, minor, another diminished. Okay. And another thing to do is you can you can play basically when I am composing over the harmonic minor, I'll do a one and interplay between a four and a five. Then I may do an interplay between a 2 diminished and a 7 diminished, keeping very much in mind that the 1 is my main note. The 1 is obviously the tonic chord as we say. Tonic is the default, the home base chord. So you want to always come back from the tonic. Everything is based on the tonic. So, <clears throat> well, that's basically the deal. Now, you can also bring in the major chords to add a sense of bravery. You know, the major chords are basically the 6. I'm calling it the 6 flat here because it's a flat 6 with respect to the major. Okay. And, oh, we have the 5 as well. <clears throat> Let me just write it in order. 5 and the 6 flat are major. So you could bring that uh, 6 flat chord to kind of add some hope, which is the C major in this case. So you kind of play very gloomy stuff. A few more tips regarding this. Okay, there are a lot of ways to use this. Uh, so if you take the 5 chord, right? The 5 chord always seems to want to resolve to the 1. Okay, this is what we call in an age-old, you know, theoretical <clears throat> fashion, the dominant chord resolving to the tonic. So generally, we have this sort of magnetism in music where the dominant chord, which is the 5, wants to come here. Okay? And another way, to, another kind of dominant chord could also be the 7. The 7 diminished is also considered a, do a dominant chord. So wh why do we call something a dominant chord? Because it wants to go to the tonic. See, if I press D sharp diminished... wants to resolve. Na, na, that's the D sharp wants to come down to E minor, right? And even the the major dominant, that's the 5. So just remember your dominant chords which resolve to the tonic. Very, very important. And then you can also have chords which in, in, improve the anticipation. Those are what we call as the predominant chords, which in this case are the 2 diminished and the 4 the minor. 
okay so they seem to want to go very well to the dominant chords we call these as predominance or second uh, uh, not secondary sorry subdominance either subdominance or predominance i'm just calling it the predominance so when you use the two minor you then follow it up with a dominant chord which is the five not two minor my bad two minor would have been minor as per the major scale this is too diminished in the harmonic minor scale the two is a diminished chord progress uh, is a diminished chord so two diminished five major one minor you're getting actually a very common two five one minor chord progression and then the predominant also you can do four minor five major one minor so you have all these options available so the this is pretty much what i wanted to say about the harmonic minor scale and how you harmonize it and in a in a nutshell what you're trying to do this could act this could first of all work for a multitude of scales it could work for whatever scale come to think of it, it could work for a for an unheard of uh, indian raga rather uh, a raga which is unheard of in terms of uh, chords where you have not added chords to those yet so you could just write the the most exotic of scales like is a very common scale used in you know the middle east and in india so if you take that scale write it down and the same story you build your chords first write the scale in a circle then you write down the available you know the notes as per the piano worm then you write down all the triads and then you classify those triads how do you classify the triads well these are the general triads major minor diminished augmented suspended and so on you classify them as per the scale so you put a column for each chord minor chord diminished chord major chord augmented chord so you put a column each and you go for it then you have basically chord progressions which you could form so it's good to roman numeralize all the chords of your respective scale after which you start building chord progressions so this could be a technique which you can use to harmonize the harmonic minor scale it could also be a technique which you could use to harmonize pretty much any scale all you have to do is find the triads and uh, you're good to go and then you develop chord progressions and um, you you roll with it right so to conclude this lesson i'm just going to share a few uh, just uh, do don't forget to go to our youtube channel and explore it a little bit more specifically you can go to the playlists which we've prepared go to the main channel uh, heading you know and then check out some of the playlists which we've prepared so there's more specifically a video series i've done called minor chord progressions so you could consider watching that where i've explained all this stuff in all sorts of different ways and also how you can change these respective chords so do head over and watch that if you can that will be really nice yeah i'll definitely explain some of these advanced chords very shortly we should definitely have a youtube live where we we talk about some of these advanced chords but this lesson was basically about harmonizing the harmonic minor scale so do you have any questions regarding that if you do please share them and i'm just going to go on and on for another couple of minutes and then i will stop the stream right first of all thanks so much for tuning in i see a lot of people there and uh, not so many questions this time but great to hear from all of you who have been watching and like i said don't forget to watch some of the other detailed videos where i explain pretty much whatever i have explained now in a lot more detail right so uh, you can start so if you are a beginner or if you are an intermediate beginner uh thanks for writing um you can definitely check out a playlist i've made a playlist called beginner piano lessons and as a beginner or an intermediate person what i focus on a lot in in my courses or in my general youtube lessons is the idea of getting your rhythm chops working together getting your hand independence doing well 
So I've made playlists. I've made a playlist called Hand Independence. You can check that out. I made a playlist called Rhythm Chops. Everything about rhythm, hand coordination, how do you feel time, how do you count triplets, how do you count 16th notes, how do you count blah, 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 various things, right? So do check that out. Thanks again for tuning in. Thanks for watching. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. The, the, that, that's what I had to say. So today we've learned how to harmonize the harmonic minor scale. I hope the lesson was useful and do supplement this by watching some of the other more regular YouTube videos which I've done on minor scales, theory, circle of fifths. I've done quite a few topics on that. And if you'd like me to teach something in specific, do uh, do, do, do let me know. So Gurpreet, I've already told the fact that, so I'm just leaving you with a couple of these tips. So that it doesn't get too advanced, I guess, or too much. You first try this out. So you take the tonic chord, play around with the 1-4-1-5 chord progression. This is very, very important. 1-4-1-5 chord progression. Then you take the tonic chord, play around with the 1-2-7 and seven progression. And then what you could do is add the 6 to bring in a sense of bravery whenever you can. Now, all of this and more is really explained quite well in the playlist minor chord progressions. Uh, if you haven't already, please check that entire series out. Everything on the minor chords and the chord progressions are mentioned there. Thanks for your question on Indian Raga chords, which have different Arohana and different Avarohana. That's an excellent question. In other words, what he's trying to say is what if you have a scale where the... Uh, the scale goes differently up and differently down, right? It'll be good to have a, you know, a lesson on that. Uh, you know, I'll also share some of the music I've done, but that'll be an interesting topic and a very detailed topic. So in theory, you can do it. So if you assume that the vocalist is going Arohana, which is ascending, you just get the chords of that ascending scale and play it while the person is ascending. And then if the person is descending, you need to, basically you need to listen to the melody. Chords are all about to serve the melody. You have to see what the melody is doing. Is it changing? Is the ga changing from normal ga to komal ga, right? So if you do a melody like, mm, let's say off the top to answer his raga question. So that rag is... I could change it. Right? So I'm kind of playing around with the major third as well as the minor third. I'm having like this interplay between them, if you will. Okay? So I hope that made sense. But to harmonize a raga is a lot of fun. You know, you should you can do it with Carnatic stuff. You can do it with Hindustani stuff. And it, it sounds... I mean, it's a job because the original artist hasn't really done it. So, you know, it's good. It's good if you, you know, get acquainted with it right away. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead now and just jam. So do come across, come over to the next stream where I'm going to jam. And uh, let's see what happens in that particular jam. Okay. I'm just going to do a bunch of songs. You can even leave some of your song requests. So head over, come over there. I will see you soon. And thanks for watching. Thanks for supporting our channel. Please continue to do so. And please continue to stay safe during these troubling times.